Hello guys, uh, welcome to tonight's screencast. So the last component of exercise physiology, we are currently, or we're going to have a look at environmental effects on the cardiorespiratory system. So if we go in the middle here, you've got your environmental effects. Um, the key focus of our first lesson was going to be on the initial effects of altitude on the cardiovascular and respiratory systems. Okay, and then we're going to have the second part of the lesson, we'll look at acclimatization and the timing of arrival um, that you can kind of optimize performance linked to altitude. So the first bit is a about altitude. Um, so your knowledge of altitude will be pretty mixed. You'll have heard of it, I'm sure, in terms of altitude training. Um, so basically, altitude refers to the height or elevation of an area above sea level. And what we're interested in is when you are at altitude, okay, what happens to your performance? Now, a lot of you will have heard of altitude training. Altitude training is over a prolonged period of time, and that will allow you to have benefits. However, what we're concerned with are what are the kind of almost negative effects on performance linked to the cardiovascular and respiratory system when you initially move to altitude. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, if I go on to here, you're basically going to have a look in the following way. So the effects of altitude on the cardiorespiratory system, what I need you to do then, all right, is you're going to basically, if I put on here, the first thing you have to understand is that kind of conditions at altitude are terms hypoxic. Okay, so your first title, this is what, this is how, so when you're at altitude, the conditions are hypoxic, and I think that's a good way to start it off. Um, so from there, what I've done here is, is change from normal. I've put all the questions down here that you would need to have in your Cornell notes. Okay, so they can go in. But on the side where you're making your key notes, I'm going to talk through it. So you need to put that information in there. Okay, so what we're looking at then. So if the conditions altitude are hypoxic, okay, what this means is there is a reduced partial pressure or there's a reduced oxygen saturation in the air. So ultimately then, when we're in hypoxic conditions, there are certain things that happen. And we kind of goes back to the stuff we did at uh, ASPE with regard to gaseous exchange. So it's a good little recap of that, really. So what happens then? Um, if you're in hypoxic altitude conditions, um, this will lead to a decreased partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. Now that is the whole point, that's the start point of our gaseous exchange process. So what that means then is because there is a, a low par, lower partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli, this reduces, if you remember that term, the diffusion gradient between the alveoli and blood. Okay, so that is a reduced diffusion gradient or decreases the diffusion gradient because remember normally partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli would be high. So what that means then is there is less oxygen diffused into blood or haemoglobin, okay, and this then has a, has a, a kind of consequent effect of there being a, a decreased oxygen saturation to haemoglobin, or you might remember the term oxygen association to haemoglobin, so there's reduced oxyhemoglobin. Now, that process then, because we then have um, a lower concentration or saturation of oxygen and haemoglobin, that directly influences the diffusion gradient between um, the blood and muscles. So there's now a reduced oxygen diffusion gradient um, from the blood to the muscles. So this means that there is a reduced oxygen diffusion into the working muscles. Okay, now what does this mean? So you've basically gone through both gaseous exchanges there, from alveoli to blood, from blood to muscles. We've talked about oxygen diffusion, or oxygen, um, partial pressure of oxygen being lower, but every site, which reduces the diffusion gradients between the um, alveoli and blood, and also the blood and muscles. So make sure you've got, you should be at that point now. Now, if I go through that, what performance effects does that have? So you can imagine, okay, with that reduced oxygen in there, there are certain things that we have to make sure we understand and that we can apply. All right, so the first thing that happens is that it gets a beta if anybody's uh, trained at altitude, what happens is you have an increase, a massive increase in breathing frequency. It's your first thing. On top of that, you're also going to have um, a decreased blood volume. You're going to have a decreased stroke volume, and you're going to have um, a decreased cardiac output. It will also lead to a massive increase in heart rate. So they're the kind of things that would happen as a result. And then the knock-on effects on this is we have a decrease in our VO2 max. We also have a decrease in aerobic capacity. And... Our intensity and duration of aerobic events is at doing aerobic events is going to decrease. So anything where you're having to use the aerobic system, jogging on a long distance run, anything like that, cycling, it will reduce um, your kind of performance. It's not going to have so much as effect on things like shot put and sprints because that isn't they are not aerobic events. So all I need from you then, your 
basically for altitude, you might put a little definition of altitude. Uh, then once you've done that, when you're at altitude, these conditions are hypoxic. Your job then is to have these questions on your left hand, call our notes section and your questions, and then the pieces of information I talked about on this screencast on the right. In tomorrow's lesson, we will then have a look at looking at how um, people acclimatize themselves with regard to altitude and allows performance to be at their optimal. And then the next two lessons, we'll have a look at kind of the effect of heat on cardiovascular and respiratory systems and temperature regulation. Okay, thanks very much.